Whenever somebody talks about Nintendo's non-gaming businesses, you probably think about some offbeat things that the company is kind of well known for at this point. Whether it's taxi cabs or Hanafuda cards, which they do still actually sell, or even love hotels. Uh, or maybe you're thinking about the Seattle Mariners, which Nintendo did own for a period under Hiroshi Yamauchi. But what if I told you that there was one side business that kind of was a blip? Something that people don't talk about or even think about that much. What if I told you that for a brief period, Nintendo sought to solve a problem that they had created by entering the home networking market. But before we talk about that, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. I've been using my Ridge Wallet for a while now and I absolutely love this thing. If you're anything like me, you probably had one of those big bulky wallets. Look, this is my old wallet and this is the Ridge Wallet. It's so ridiculous how small and thin this thing is. I absolutely love it. And it's sturdy as all get out. This one in particular is made out of titanium and it's the most durable wallet I've ever had, not to mention the smallest. I'm able to keep all my cards and cash in here and I have everything ready to go and easy to access. The Ridge Wallet makes the perfect Father's Day gift. In fact, I already bought one for my dad and he'll be getting it soon. So if you see this, I'm sorry for spoiling your gift, dad, but I promise promise you're going to love this thing. Ridge Wallet is fantastic and I cannot recommend it enough. Head to my link below, ridge.com slash good vibes and use code good vibes for 15% off your order at checkout. Thanks again to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. In 2008, Nintendo was in one of the most successful periods in its history. More than 5 million Wiis were in Japanese households, and the DS was taking the country by storm, with somewhere around 16 million people in Japan owning a DS. Both the Wii and the DS were Nintendo's first attempt at making consoles that connected to the internet out of the box, and both of them used Wi-Fi to make the process as easy as possible. Back in 2008, however, only about 30 to 40% of Japanese households had Wi-Fi, despite roughly 80% of homes in Japan having broadband internet access. These days, that may sound strange, but back in 2008, having Wi-Fi wasn't a safe assumption no matter what country you live in. These days, most internet service providers will provide a wireless router when they connect your service, or you can provide your own. If you get your router from your ISP, it probably comes with a built-in modem, but in 2008, your modem and router were two separate devices, and most Wi-Fi users had to buy their own. With that conundrum in mind, Nintendo decided to set out to provide a low-cost wireless router to support the millions of Wi-Fi-enabled devices they had sold. Three members of Nintendo's network development division were tasked with creating a Wi-Fi router that was simple enough for anyone to use. In an Iwata Asks interview, a member of Nintendo's network development group had this to say, I felt it was important for Nintendo to put out a product that a customer could buy knowing, this is all I need to easily connect my DS or Wii. Nintendo decided to partner with another Japanese company, Buffalo, to develop the router. Do you remember that AOSS button that nobody used on the DS? That's a proprietary technology that was created by Buffalo. It's a method of connecting to a Wi-Fi router without a password, but more on that later. Nintendo and Buffalo partnered to produce this, the Nintendo Wi-Fi Network Adapter. It was sold exclusively on Nintendo's online store in 2008. The Nintendo Wi-Fi Network Adapter is a tiny device, even by modern standards. It's just a bit bigger than a Game Boy Advance SP, but it packs some pretty impressive features in that tiny package. Five gigahertz routers were on the rise in 2008, but they were both ridiculously expensive and massive in size. Nintendo's tiny networking box could only broadcast on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, which was prone to interference, but it was able to broadcast two wireless networks simultaneously, something that wouldn't really become commonplace for about five more years. But I had to know, could it keep up with modern internet bandwidth? In 2008, Japan's average internet connection speed was 15.8 megabits per second. And in the US, the picture was much worse, where the average speed was a paltry 4.2 megabits per second. Since then, average internet speeds have shot up to over 100 megabits per second. Could Nintendo's 2008 router keep up with modern demands? Nope. So I did away with my perfectly good router and connected this thing. Once I thumbed through the manual and took a minute to appreciate some Wii era warning illustrations I'd never seen before. I always forget that Nintendo products don't want any juice. I muddled through the Japanese only setup pages and configured my network. 
What could Nintendo's router do with my 1000 megabit per second internet connection? Yeah, that seems about right. On wireless, I got about 9 megabits, or roughly 1% of my total bandwidth. If I connected to my network using an ethernet cable, I could pull down about 50. And to be fair, these are completely acceptable speeds for a router released in 2008. Both wired and wireless speeds were well within the average of what was available to most homes when this thing released. With my Nintendo-powered Wi-Fi up and running in my house, I wanted to see just how easy it was to set up a DS and connect to it. And with its low speed, how would it work? I pushed the button on the Nintendo router, waited a minute, and just like that, my 3DS was connected to the internet. And once I had connected, it performed surprisingly well. I was able to play Smash on it with no lag whatsoever. While I was playing, I also watched YouTube videos and streamed music, all without the 3DS having any issues. My 3DS also stayed connected no matter where I took it in my house. That is incredibly impressive for a router that is this small and this old. Nintendo truly outdid themselves here. Despite its slow speeds, I was able to connect my Switch and play Mario Kart with no issues either. I'm amazed by how well this device holds up. While I wouldn't recommend you go out and buy one of these, it's amazing that it even works at all. 15 years is an eternity, technologically speaking, and the idea that any piece of hardware this old could still function, and function well, is pretty cool. It's clear in hindsight that Nintendo didn't have any great ambition to enter the home networking market. Instead, they just wanted to create a companion device to the DS and Wii that would help them get on the internet during a time where the majority of Japanese households didn't have Wi-Fi access. But it's kind of a shame that they didn't continue down this path. The Nintendo Wi-Fi router was pretty revolutionary for its time. It stood out in a sea of kind of samey boxes. It had two network support. It was able to connect your devices with AOSS, giving just a single touch of a button to get your DS or your Wii on the internet. It sounds like something that could be announced in 2022, and it kind of keeps up in a weird way. The speeds it delivered were in line with what modern connection speeds were at the time, and amazingly, it still worked here on my home network. I like to think about a world where Nintendo didn't just stick to video games, and that I could maybe have a Nintendo router sitting next to my current consoles. But I don't think they're ever going to return to this idea, and I don't think we'll ever see Nintendo do home networking again, unfortunately. But I can always dream. Thanks for watching.